My first encounter was with the National Socialist Movement, which is the largest, the largest neo-Nazi group in America. Which After that, I started traveling with some, some various clan groups. Um, and then I met Matthew Heimbach, who became the, the, the main character of my book. Our movement is about securing the existence of our people and a future for white children. All of us are engaged in this struggle. And much like a military, there is positions for everyone. Many of the people I cover, they come from poor, rural, and predominantly white parts of America, Appalachia. And they, they, they look around and, you know, they see that their neighbors and their friends are, are suffering under opioid addiction, that they have no jobs and, and no prospects, and they kind of extrapolate from that, then that must be what it's like for, for white people all over. They, they don't have the ability to kind of lift their gaze a little bit, because if they did, I think they'd see that white people on the whole, especially white men who this movement is, you know, mostly consisting of, have it pretty good. The gatherings are a lot smaller. And you know, that's the, that's the inherent problem in the in the far right, sort of alt-right. It, it's a it's a it's a movement which in large part exists online with you know an anonymous Twitter avatars. With the internet, with social media, it becomes that much easier to have your opinions reinforced. And once you try to translate that into real world action, it becomes, it becomes difficult. I was at Charlottesville where they were, I would say around 400 people, which is by far the largest gathering I'd ever been to. And I've been to dozens of these things. Yes, there has been a mobilizing effect and I think people are, are emboldened, but even so, they're still struggling on how to translate this into an actionable physical movement. The current crop of politicians are doing any favors. I think they're feeding into this as well. So it becomes this pretty toxic place where it's easy for this, um, this kind of rhetoric to, to grow even more. On the side. There was a group on this side, you can call them the left, you've just called them the left, that came violently attacking the other group. You know, there was a, there was a rally in, in Boston after, after Charlottesville where I think, you know, five or six nationalists came out and a few thousand uh, counter-protesters came out. There are rays of light in this thing. Um, just recently, a guy, um, a former hammer skin, which is the most extreme part of the skinhead movement, texted me and said he left the movement and that he might want to help others leave too. So as awful and abhorrent uh, as their ideology and politics is, some of them can change. Some of them can turn and c come back to us.